The release of DeepSeek means we have a new massive open source tool that we can use to augment our robotic systems, either by interacting with DeepSeek's online V3 model or our own local DeepSeek installation. In this video, I will show you how to create a simple ROS2 agent that uses DeepSeek to generate a ROS2 command and execute it in a robot and therefore move its wheels. We will do this in both the online DeepSeek's V3 model and a local DeepSeek installation in our robot. If you want to learn how to use large language models like DeepSeek in real robots, check out our courses Gen AI for Robotics and Advanced Gen AI for Robotics. You'll go from LLM fundamentals to applying them in robots for movement, perception, and understanding human commands. Large language models interpret natural language and can translate it into structured commands in ROS2. With this, we can develop the following use case. Tell a robot to move forward, backwards, spin, etc. The agent should then execute a structured ROS2 command and the wheel should move according to what you told the robot. This is the logic behind our simple ROS2 agent. First, the agent receives a command like move forward, or move backwards through natural language input. Then the command is inserted to a detailed prompt with more context to help DeepSeek to generate a well-structured command. Then the prompt is sent to DeepSeek v3 API. Then the DeepSeek responds with the ROS2 command. Afterwards, the agent will verify the command structure and execute it, resulting in the robot wheels moving. So let's get started. Uh, here's our robot. Uh, we're going to be putting our ROS2 agent in here and uh, we expect to tell the robot move forward, move backwards, and the wheels should spin. Uh, and the first way we're going to do this is by calling the DeepSeek API. And you can actually do this for free if we use Open Router and create an account there. So let me show you how to do that. Uh, basically just go to openrouter.ai and create an account very simple just you can do it with one click and once you do you'll have menu here keys and we're gonna create one i've been doing some tests so you can just create a key call it whatever you want ross2 key and then copy this and make sure you paste it somewhere because this is the only time it will be displayed and this is the key that we'll use to authenticate to call the api so that's it. That's it on the Open Router API. Now we have a way to call DeepSeek for free. Okay, so now that we have our key, we can use it in our agent script. So right now I am inside the robot. Uh, it's called FastBot55. So for example, now that the robot is running, I could do something like run the, the teleop command and notice how the command build topic is namespaced and you know, Use the teleop to move the robot forward, move the robot backward. So basically, that's what we're going to do, but only with DeepSeek commands, DeepSeek prompt. So uh, let's do that. So for that, I have prepared a repository that I, it's shared uh, down below in the description. And uh, let's enter it, DeepSeek ROS2. And in here, you'll have... Um, two scripts. They're both DeepSeek ROS2 agents. And the first one, I added API to the front to differentiate that this is the online model that we're going to be calling. So let's take a look at that. All right. So this script is straightforward. And there's a couple of things I want to mention. We're going to make an API call and uh, then process that answer in order to remove unnecessary new lines, characters, things like that. And then we can use sub process to execute the command on the terminal, like we would if we just typed in ROS2 topic pub command val forward. So basically, the script consists of two methods. The first one is the get ROS command from DeepSeek right here, this one. And this is going to be using that key we generated to ask uh, the DeepSeek model to generate this command. So first of all, we have to use a couple of things. We need to use the API key that we copied earlier in the video. And then we're also going to be using 
the model name and the URL for the API call. So if you see here, we're going to be using the URL for the openrouter.ai URL. And this is uh, the URL that you need to use for the free model. And then the, the model name is deepseek slash deepseek minus chat free. So that's how we're going to be calling an API that's free and we can get a response from that. So let's move on to the get ROS command from deepseek. Here you can see that I'm using the API key to call the API and then uh, send a data, send some data to it. So this is the standard uh, content of what your request should look like. First, we're going to give it a role uh, system and then the content, we're just going to tell it, you know, the, that you are a ROS2 expert. You need to convert user requests into valid ROS2 terminal commands. So that's what we're telling the DeepSeq. And then more specifically, we're going to tell it, generate a ROS2 command using our prompt here that we're going to be inputting into our script. This will be move forward, move backwards, etc. And then we're going to give it some extra instructions for help. All right. Uh, this is based on try and an error of what the model returns. So basically, I tell it, use ROS2 topic pub with the type geometry messages on the topic command vel, format it as a single line command with Yalm syntax for linear and angular components, and return only the command, no bash, no dollar signs, no nothing. And then the temperature is an extra deep seek parameter for the randomness, I believe, of the and the creativeness of the answer that deep seek will, will provide. So I just used the default 0.3. All right, so then we sent our, uh, our call and then we expect a response from it. And once we receive that response, it should be something like ROS2 topic pub, command vel, and then the message. Uh, so we just uh, basically make sure it doesn't have extra things to validate it. And then we can actually execute the ROS command. Basically at this point, the command is a string that is what you would put in the terminal, ROS to run, command vel, move the wheels. So uh, we just clean it up, like I said, and then the full command, I just make sure that the subprocess call will also source our ROS installation. That's a requirement, obviously, uh, to do ROS2 commands, you have to have ROS2 installed, and in this case, we have Humble installed in this robot. So we source it and then uh, ask the command. And then we just do the subprocess call, uh, a bash call, like it would be in the terminal, basically. So that is, that is the basic uh, structure of the agent. Very simple, right? So process the input natural language command, ask DeepSeek to generate the command, and then return it and clean it up and execute. Right? That's it. Why don't we go ahead and test it? So basically, we're going to run our API deep seek, and then it's asking me for prompt, right? Um, one thing I like to mention that can be problematic is that this robot actually um, has a namespace. So in our prompt, we're going to specify that our topic is not only command vel, it will be fastbot55 command vel. So if we do here ROS2 topic list, we can see that the actual topic to move the, the wheels is fastbot55 command vel. Uh, so we're going to tell the robot something like move forward, at a speed of 0 0.2 on topic fastbot 55 command vel. And, oh, I forgot the uh, DeepSeek API key, which you will probably also uh, miss if you don't export it into your uh, terminal here. So let's just do that. Let's do export oh, right here export DeepSeek API key, 
And then whatever you copied from Open Router is what you have to put in there. So we export it and then run it again. And we're just going to copy the same command here. So once we call it, it sends the request to DeepSeek API. It should return with a command and then it should execute it. We should see the, the wheels move. Awesome. Um, so basically, we didn't do anything with ROS. Our script is not a node. It's just a, a way of DeepSeek to move the wheels without actually you know, us telling it. It's a, with an intermediate. So in the same way, we can, we can actually um, tell move backwards. So instead of move forward, Instead of move forward, we can say move backwards at a speed of, let's say now, 0 0.1 on the same fastbot fifty-fied command dial topic. And then uh, our response, instead of having this linear positive, it should be negative because that's what DeepSeek should figure out by itself. Let's try it. Again, it calls the API, and when it returns, look, we have a negative command, and the wheels are turning the opposite way. So, um, great. That is awesome. We are moving the robot with an AI ROS2 agent. So, to install... Um, DeepSeek locally on our Raspberry Pi. It's very simple. It's actually only two commands. So let's do that. Uh, so all you need to do is clean this up, show up on the screen and on the description as well. So this is the curl script. Um, it's, it's doing it through Olama. Uh, let me just show you real quick what Olama looks like. Um, show you guys Olama is just a framework to get up and running with large language models you can load a ton of them Llama 3.3 DeepSeek and others that I've never even heard about but it's a very simple way to just load models and then run them in your local in, uh, computer so for that again we just need to paste that command in our robot. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi 4 robot. Uh, so we just run that command. And just wait for it to install. Okay, so it has completed the installation. At the end, we get a warning saying that there's no NVIDIA GPU detected. Um, which we don't have. Uh, we have a simple Raspberry Pi 4, but that's okay. We'll just use it like this. And to run it, uh, you can just actually do Olama run and then the name of the model for uh, this one that recommended one for the Raspberry, which is R1 1.5B. So we can run it and basically a prompt will open. And uh, basically at this point, you're using your own DeepSeek model uh, locally. So let's, all right. So at this point, it's like doing your normal chat on uh, DeepSeek. So hello, uh, are you? And, you know, it should process and think and answer. Basic. All right, so now that we have this model running, we should ask it to do the same thing that we just asked with the online model, and we'll see the differences. So actually, let's exit out here with buy, and take a look at our 
DeepSeek Rust agent file, which again is the same as the online version, but it's calling this DeepSeek instead of the cloud online one. So basically it's the same thing. The prompt is the same. Generate uh, a Rust to command from my prompt and adding specifications. The only difference is that the URL for that we're calling is different. Now it's localhost, it's in our computer, and um, we're going to use the DeepSeek model I told you, R1, 1.5B. And that is the only difference we're calling, we're calling that. And just a couple of differences between the uh, data package. And here we're doing stream true because we want to uh, actually look at the R model, our local model, think and see if it's good or not. Uh, and let's see what happens. We will run it and say move forward at a speed of 0 0.2 on topic fastbot. Five command bell. The same thing, except now it's calling our model and it's going to be a lot slower because, you know, we don't have a big computer. And we should actually watch it think. Here, listen. Uh, so at this point, our model is thinking. And um, you'll see that it's not as good as the online model, basically because it's a small model and it's untrained. So right now, uh, it's thinking, it's setting the conditions, and, you know, this whole time it's thinking and figuring out what the command is going to be, which the online model, the V3, does it like that. So let's wait for it to finish thinking. So at this point, it's almost ready to provide an answer our local installation. Here it is. After the think tag, it's the answer. And you can see ROS2 topic pub message publisher and then something strange. Well, fastbot55 command. And obviously it's not the correct, uh, the correct command. Um, so in this case, the wheels don't move because the, the answer was actually this, which is not, it's not uh, correct. And I've actually tried a bunch to, to give it more context as much as possible. Even tell it, hey, just repeat with this command and it won't do it. Uh, so that points that to the fact that the model is very basic. So you need to do extra things like tune it or, um, or train it with ROS2 commands. So that's a basic explanation on how to create a ROS2 agent with DeepSeek. We saw how we can vary the command, the natural language command, in order to modify the resulting ROS2 command. For example, move forward, move backwards, spin, etc. And we also saw the limitations of our local installation of DeepSeek and uh, how it's quite difficult to achieve the same thing without the good hardware or a, a bigger model with more parameters that can um, respond appropriately to our request. And that is it. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and uh, turn on notifications to know when our next video comes out. Bye-bye.